Hello dear students, welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the electric field, MCQs. As I said you in the previous class, it's MCQ questions we are going to discuss. The first one, the first question is about at a particular point, this, the electric field depends upon, the options are source charge Q only, test charge Q0 only, both Q and Q0 and neither Q nor Q0. We know that yesterday we learned it as E equals F by Q. Right, E equals F by Q. So here we can write it as uh, 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 divided by R square. In that when we are uh, avoid dividing it with the test charge, in the numerator, we will be getting it as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by R square. So, it is depending only on Q. Okay. Source charge Q only. It is depending only on the source charge, not on the test charge. Next question. SI unit of electric field intensity is. See, electric field intensity E equals F by Q. From here itself, you can write down the unit. Newton by coulomb. So, the answer is Newton per coulomb. Next is electric field due to a single charge is asymmetric, cylindrically symmetric, spherically symmetric, then none of the above. Electric charge due to, uh, sorry, electric field due to a single charge. So, a charge is present over here, then electric field will be acting in all the directions, right? Electric field will be in all the directions, so it will be spherically symmetric. Next is, electric dipole moment is a scalar quantity, neither scalar nor vector, and then a vector directed from minus Q to plus Q, a vector directed from plus Q to minus Q. So, electric dipole moment. Dipole moment is moving from minus Q to plus Q. The answer is the uh, electric field or electric dipole moment is acting from minus Q to plus Q. Then, electric field intensity due to an electric dipole varies with distance R of the dipole moment from the center of the dipole as. So, E is proportional to 1 by r e is proportional to 1 by r to the power 4 e is proportional to 1 by r square and e is proportional to r cube due to an electric dipole electric field intensity due to an electric dipole simply if they are asking electric field due to a point charge it is proportional to r square inversely proportional to r square but if it is for a dipole, E is inversely proportional to R cube. So, it is answer is D. E is inversely proportional to R cube. At a given distance from the center of electric dipole, field intensity on axial line is K times the field intensity on equatorial line. So, the way of K equals 2, 3, 4, 1, 2p by r cube and p by r cube, right, 1 by 4 by epsilon 0, p, 2p by r cube, electric at a given distance from the center of electric dipole, electric field intensity in the axial line and equatorial line, so it is varying with the factor 2, e equals 1 by 4 by epsilon 0, p by r cube, and, uh, and e equals 1 by 4 by epsilon 0, 2p by r cube, so variation is 2. Next question. Electric field due to an electric dipole is spherically symmetric, cylindrically symmetric, asymmetric, none of the above. Due to an electric dipole, due to electric dipole, it will be like cylindrically symmetric. Now, due to a single charge, it is spherically symmetric. Due to a dipole, it is cylindrically symmetric. Then, when an electric dipole is held at an angle in a uniform electric field, the net force F and torque acting on the dipole are, first option is F is equal to 0, 2 equals 0, F is not equal to 0, tau not equal to 0, F is equal to 0, tau not equal to 0, F is not equal to 0, tau equals 0. 
So here electric dipole held at an angle in a uniform electric field. In a uniform electric field, electric dipole is held at an angle. So QE and minus QE. F is equal to QE and F is equal to minus QE. So sum of these will be equal to 0. So whether torque is there? Yes, because it is the, it is two equal and opposite uh, forces acting with a with the different lines of action. So torque will be acting on it. F is equal to 0. Tau not equal to 0. Then next one. Potential energy of an electric dipole held at an angle theta in a uniform electric field is 0. When theta equals. So when potential energy equal to 0. We know that it is uh, when theta equals Yes, 90 degree. When theta equals 90 degree, potential energy will be equal to 0. Then, force F acting on a test charge Q0 in a uniform electric field E is. What will be the value? F is equal to Q into Q. Uh, yeah. How can we find out the force acting on a test charge in a uniform electric field E? So, we know that E equals F by Q0. So, force will be equal to E into Q0. E Q0 is the answer. First one, A. Now, some of the fill in the blanks questions are also there. So, we will discuss that then. First one, electric field intensity at any point is the dash experienced by the unit positive charge placed at that point. It is the force experienced by the unit positive charge. Electric field intensity at any point is the force experienced by unit positive charge in a, at the point. Next is electric vector is electric intensity is a which quantity vector quantity or a scalar quantity? It is a vector quantity. Electric field intensity unit we already told it as Newton per coulomb. Electric field due to a single charges. How does it is spherically symmetric? I already told all these things. It is spherically symmetric. Next is electric field lines of force are dash as against magnetic field of force which are see here electric uh, lines of forces are it is discontinuous and magnetic lines for forces are continuous lines. Next is net charge on an electric dipole is. What is the net charge on an electric Q plus minus Q to equal and opposite charges? So net charge will be 0. Dipole moment is a vector quantity. What is the unit of dipole moment? P equals Q into 2A. Q is coulomb. A is distance. So it is coulomb meter. Then. Next is field intensity due to a single charge varies inversely as so it is it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Field intensity uh, due to a single charge is inversely proportional to R square and for a dipole it is inversely proportional to R cube. Okay, clear? So these are some of the uh, questions which I had taken from the uh, electric field portion. Next, we are going to study about the uh, Gauss theorem. Okay, so before starting to the uh, Gauss theorem, first we need to know about electric flux. What is meant by electric flux? Electric flux is the uh, is an area in which see how many number of field lines are passing per unit area. That is called an electric flux. See here. Uh, this is the electric field lines which are passing in a particular unit area. How many number of field lines are passing through that? That is called an electric flux. Okay. Electric flux over an area in electric field is measure of number of field lines crossing unit area. That is electric flux. Electric flux we can write it as the formula is E dot delta S. 
Here both are vector quantities. So we can write it as E delta S cos theta also. Theta is the angle between E and surface area. Always remember surface area will be, vector will be always perpendicular to this. Uh, what is that? Perpendicular to its surface. So to find out the total flux over the surface, closed in the closed integral e dot ds okay closed integral e ds cos theta or closed integral e dot ds using that only we wrote the gauss theorem that is very very important flux acting on it is that on a closed surface will be equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times charge enclosed in the surface surface integral of Surface integral of electric field produced by any source over a closed surface that is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times charge enclosed by the surface. So anyway definition is a statement is not required you can remember like flux is equal to closed integral E dot ds is equal to q by epsilon 0 like that you can remember okay so let here this gauss theorem is very very important gauss theorem flux phi e equals closed integral e dot ds is equal to q by epsilon 0 gauss theorem is applicable for a symmetric charge distribution see uh, symmetry is uh, usually see here in this case what is that in a uh, using gauss theorem we found out in a straight conductor long straight conductor what is the electric field in a plane surf a sheet of charge what is the electric field in a spherical surface what is the electric field that and all we found out right so here gauss theorem is applicable for symmetric charge distance. symmetry should be there then only we can apply gauss theorem in that and gauss theorem is based on the inverse square dependence of e on distance e is inversely proportional to r square gauss theorem is depending on this one okay then next we are going to see what is the how we can be finding out the electric field due to a, a, a long straight uniformly charged wire straight conductor uniformly charged conductor electric field equals lambda by 2 pi epsilon 0 r okay so this one you should by heart electric field due to an infinitely long straight uniformly charged wire if it is a uniformly charged wire when we are considering electric field we will be considering a cylindrical surface at a distance r cylindrical uh, surface will be the uh, gaussian surface while we are calculating like that we will get the electric field as lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r what is this lambda lambda is the linear charge density lambda is la linear charge density so it is inversely proportional to r directly proportional to lambda okay don't forget about it this is electric field acting on a uniformly charged straight conductor acting on it okay so here next we are going to consider the electric field intensity due to a uniformly charged spherical shell uniformly charged uniformly charged spherical shell okay so before that what we learned we learned about the electric field due to a uniformly charged long straight conductor e is equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon 0 into r here electric field due to a uniformly charged spherical shell. Here electric field we will be getting it as E equals 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by R square. Okay. So this is this charge is distributed uniformly over the surface of the shell. Okay. So E equals 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by R square. Okay. So on the surface of the shell if I am considering this will become radius of the shell on the surface on the surface of the shell if i am considering e equals 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by capital r square capital r we will consider it as the radius of the spherical shell okay then inside the shell when i am considering a point which is inside the spherical shell what will be the electric field inside the shell electric field will be equal to zero so when i am considering the graph that also See, please keep that in mind. Inside it is 0 and after that we will be getting the maximum electric field at a distance at a point R and then it will be decreasing. Okay, this is how the graph will be in a uniformly charged spherical shell. 
okay then next is so next we are going to consider about the electric field intensity due to a non conducting charged solid sphere if it is a non conducting charged uh, solid sphere how we will be getting electric field e equals r rho divided by 3 epsilon okay this is the formula that is e is directly proportional to r this is due to a non conducting charged solid sphere e is proportional to r if it is a non conducting charged solid sphere then e is proportional to r at the center if we are considering at the center the, the same like the previous one e is equal to 0 and at the surface we will be representing it as e is proportional to capital r okay so e equals r rho by 3 epsilon will be the minimum value which we are obtaining over here this is not in your textbook so most probably it won't be asking for you asking to you then next is charge the thin spherical infinite plane sheet of charge okay in infinite plane sheet of charge we know it has plane sheet of charge plane sheet when we are considering a equals sigma by 2 epsilon 0 what does the sigma represents sigma represents the surface charge density sigma equals surface charge density sigma by epsilon 0 okay clear children this is about the plane sheet of charge so these formulas are very important all these formulas you should keep that in mind depending on this we will be doing some of the questions in the next class and the whole first chapter electric charges and fields about that chapter more numeric more mcq questions we will be doing it in the next uh, uh, sessions okay so i hope today's video is useful for you and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe like and share thank you for watching bye